the insect tier list. I mean, I'll watch it and see if it's good for real. Play of the game. Bro, is that Overwatch? Some pretty good editing. Cozy, you should drive TF2. Insects are one of the most broken factions the game has ever seen. Nowhere else in nature will you find such an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered, but also extremely unique. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group, because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual abilities are overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, Bro. since they're just insanely OP when used in- That's beautiful. Wait, was the inside of it look like a leaf? Bro, what the hell? And then it's, it's wings literally just look like a painting. Combination with one another. You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes and history. Insects were added to the game during the early Carboniferous expansion. The devs bumped up the atmospheric Is he talking about life as if it's a game? Okay. Oxygen level, which allowed members of the arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities. And while most of the arthropod player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, Damn. a small offshoot of the crustacean player base opted to forego the gigantism trait and instead used this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game, flight. Because these new creatures were the very first to gain the ability to fly, the air became entirely their Yo. domain for the time being, and would remain that way until reptiles unlocked the ability several expansions later. Insects <laughs> are- Bro, the way he's commentated and the way he's explaining it is fire. I'm actually, I might, I might watch this full video. I might watch full video. Extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads. In fact, they're so diverse that it's impossible to agree them all in a single up. video. I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, nah, but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be Insects discussing look today mad cool. have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. So it's a little tough to pin down their general attributes. Why did you say smash? Why did you just say smash? Being members of the arthropod faction, all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk which greatly raises their mm. AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player levels up. This makes insects quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. The insect build also oh, has access no. to the Bro, compound eyes perk, which grants them vastly improved awareness compared to other arthropods like scorpions and centipedes. With 360 degree vision, their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is- Bro, this is probably like seven-year-old Jake's dream video. This is a gamer video, but it's also nature. Was y'all into nature when y'all was kids? Was y'all like the bug kids? Y'all used to play with like, in the dirt and pick up ants and stuff like that? Yes? You weird, man. Never was like that. I was in the, in the, in the house with the AC playing the game. Far superior to- I was a boy scout most other flyers. This enhanced perception perk good, is Nick. important because insects tend to have naturally high stealth. So in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to though. For a more in-depth <laughs> I was look, the one that said let's kill the, the bugs. At the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect, and not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, Ew. which decide to back and drop the flight ability Bro, in favor feel... of more refined yeah. strategies, the silverfish don't actually never had access to it in the first place. Bro, is that an ant bridge? An exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. Yo. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything with their only useful stat being their decent- Why are y'all playing Smash and Pass? Their special the ability chat. allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend Bro, is to- that a is that a nigga frog? <laughs> what set do they rep? They got the green on them? Yo, I've never seen a frog like that. What skin do they got? 
I didn't even know frogs could be anything but green. To actually stick to urban areas, feeding on things like paper and cloth in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Ew, even there, they, they aren't stomp. completely safe though. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful ability ah! places it firmly in F tier. Why did I just get honestly scared? honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Most insects are quite viable, and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably go. some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game, second only to color changing builds Ew. like the Octopus and Oh! Kimura. As impressive as these are though, the question I constantly end up asking is... How do they do that? How did the squid do that? Yo, what? This is blowing my... This video is blowing my mind, bro. I cannot believe it. Is this really necessary? Because with the exception of insects which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposomatic coloration strategy, insects as a whole already have an above average stealth you're not a squid, and are usually I know able I'm to maintain nigga. this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Ultra Instinct Octopus? Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage oh, that's this is the little the little dancing bug me match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more, rather than aiding in their. Why do they to move hide. like that though? Some phasmids do possess chemical defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, this attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, complete with all the major flaws the strategy like is rolled with. Although at least phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat, with extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and Damn. have a mobility stat Damn. in single digits. Oh, he gets literally fried. the highest kills in the game. However, the Leopard player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars and adult Leopards alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in and some designed to intimidate. Is that a snake? Granted, these strategies often don't hold up against high intelligence builds but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, like spines and toxins, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas of the map and reach higher quality loot that might be too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable for bro, what is that, bro? I don't even know, bro. It looked like a stingray. The, I've never seen a butterfly built like that with the long wings in the back. I got cozy being a butterfly in a race. Duh, I'm killing them. For a variety of stealth or intimidation. That's purposes. a big ass moth. Also, just make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, Lepids still take plenty of L's, and most high-tier insect builds have quite oppressive matches against you don't them, get dusted. so they're definitely not a below-average faction. That's actually it for D-tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, Smash but again, insects are a massively successful faction, and are going to be concentrated in the higher tiers. Bro, At stop, the bottom of C-tier, we have the Cockroach. Oh my God. The Cockroach is... Bro, quick little story time, bro. I'm tell y'all... I'm pretty sure I told y'all the story time, but I'm going like... <laughs> I ever tell you that one time I was drinking out of a Coca-Cola cup and I put it down. It was like a McDonald's cup and I opened it and it was just a cockroach inside that motherfucker. Bro. I, bro. This is when I was a jit, bro. And then I threw that motherfucker in the toilet. I threw it in the toilet. So that it could die. Like I threw all the coke out the toilet. 
and it still survived and crawled outside the cup. Yo, I started flipping out, started fl throwing everything everywhere. I threw it inside of the uh, inside of the toilet, and then I tried to flush it, and it lived. But I'm not gonna cap, bro. These are some ferocious builds, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Cause you now you don't remember, bro. It, bro, it flew. I remember. It flew. It tried to fly out the toilet, and then I closed the top of the toilet. Bro, because, you know, when you flush something, it pulls it down. But that cockroach stood 10 toes. And then we just kept flushing it and flushing it and flushing it and flushing it. Until I, eventually, I guess, it finally got flushed. But, bro, I'm telling you right now, cockroaches. It's the ultimate survivor, which opted to spec into mobility, stealth, and emotion. Like, who gave these niggas the ability to fly, bro? That's the worst of... Ugh, just think about it, bro. Cockroach is the ultimate survival. And you know it's crazy because you have the small cockroaches that don't fly and they just, they come in a lot. Like, it's like, you'll get like a pack of them, but you also got the big cockroaches that can fly and they're big as hell and fat. And then also you have the, the hybrid cockroaches that I seen like three years ago in one of my man's fridge. It wasn't small, but it wasn't big. It was like medium sized, but it could fly efficiently. They can bite. Oh, don't say that, bro. I'm getting the egg. I'm getting the egg, dude. Stop. Which opted to spec into mobility, stealth, and a multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, but they do have an above average ground movement speed. Enabling them Nigga, to that's the exact hybrid I'm talking about. That's not a roach. That's a yo. That's a motherfucking bird. Fury to cover if they see a predator player approaching. Ah, ah. When caught out in the open or backed into a corner. They're fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. They're also somewhat carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them, because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Next in C tier, we have the Earwig, a fearsome looking generalist build, which appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end, called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as the Cersei are, the I don't know who's holding him, but yo, see, if you're a grown ass man and you can still hold these bugs, you have issues, bro. You have issues. Actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. And even against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an earwig and can attack without restraint. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do as the Earwig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups mm. against soft-bodied insects, mm. and allow the Earwig to carry their targets much better nice than they can their jaws. And while it may seem silly to have opted for rear-facing weapons instead of the more typical forward-facing ones like mandibles and rostrums, the position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows Earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid-tier, Earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. They would do well to spec into some sort of venom. Venom-infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid-tier, don't overestimate this build's ability. Who is Coyote Peterson? Crickets and grasshoppers? At the top of C-tier, we've got the Orthopterans, including grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, 
as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. But this utility- No way you don't know who that is. Now I feel like I gotta know who it is. Bro, I don't spend my time watching people mess with bugs. Why, why would I do that? Bro, he just lets himself get stung? What? Why? So his whole purpose is to let himself get stung and eaten up by bugs. This is what he does. To feel pain. Yo, what type of freak is this nigga, bro? Cameras are rolling. Here we go. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the bite zone with the German Shepherd, the Doberman Pinscher, and the Belgian Malinois. I'm Coyote Peterson. Watching! He bent toward them to take it off, and it was watching them. That's so you, Cozy? Bro, I would never do that. Bro, I learned how to break a dog neck in seventh grade. If a dog was to bite me, it's up, it's clip, it's over, bro. It's GG, game over. That's why, that's what be killing me. They never helped, dickhead. Bro, they don't never help him when he asks for help. Yo, let me know if you guys actually want this these type of videos on the channel. Like, what, bro, are you serious? This is a real thing? There's something wrong with y'all. I can't believe it. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the paper wasp. And bro, what is wrong with him? Wildin'. I ain't gonna lie. I, nah, he's wildin'. He's wildin', bro. I ain't gonna cap. He's wildin'. Listen, he, nah, I ain't gonna lie. One more for a good measure is, is, is he said, all right, I'm gonna check out the bullet ant one and we're gonna finish the other video. He said, one more for a good measure. Is that the bullet ant one? What is this? Ladies and gentlemen. Bro, I don't, no, no, I don't wanna watch that. You said, okay, he got stung by it. Okay, let me see this. Nope. Yo. Dang, pain index out there. Am I gonna pay why? It's second. Right there. <laughs> He better than me. I'm going to spend the next. He better than me. Wow, he's something wrong with it. Ability is lessened if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag, and so instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, a powerful jump enables the Arthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because their jump has such yo, excellent frame data, yo, why are you landing trying to an ambush up strike on, on like an Orthopteran can feel what, near what impossible What insect even times. is that? And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. Yo. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal. Meaning that if a grass- Crazy, now imagine taking a wrong step into a jungle flying into an entire colony of them. Uh, bro, at that point, if I got a Ruger on me, bro, I'm ending my own life. Upper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack. In GTA. They may in be GTA. able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing serious damage to the attacker. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy, which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players, and although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright or one hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance Yo, to retaliate. Yo, why is he? <laughs> he doing? He doing them like I do the KJ and gang beasts. We have the hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being Yo, somewhat dude, shield got shaped. A, a set. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts. The Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access, like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, Damn. and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. Oh, oh. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all well, that, they have fairly bug. low mobility, 
making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. Some do break this trend though, and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic mobility. Bro, they my question is who is the cameramans in these videos? Like. Who are the people that really go out here and say, I'm going to film this specific creature this at this specific time, capturing them doing this specific thing? Because these are moving cameras. Making them some of the most fearsome aquatic builds in the game. <laughs> like Giga Chad? On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the Ooh, name my. stink bugs from. Uh, However, similar uh. to phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit oh, lacking what, what, and what, often is that fail crib? to deter attackers. So certainly a group with some standout members and fine up, for XP Mikey? farming, but still nothing too broken. Lace wings. And topping off B tier, we have the Neuroptera, a rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. However, looking at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, Ew. is a really effective predator build bro, for any on, player bro. who prefers the camping playstyle. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Ant lions have a devastating, venomous bite which they use Ant to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow that? jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush playstyle unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles Yo. to stun its target, making escape a near impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuropter and Larvae, but in short, they are what the Earwig pretends to be. If you took the Earwig Cersei, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an antlion. Damn. So why the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find each other and complete the mating questline, something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So while I do- So they just become adults to make babies? That's, I ain't gonna lie, who is, bro, that build is trash. I think it'd be more impressive if they didn't Yo. take such a massive <laughs> cut to their power level during their final level up. There's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. Why am I actually At the interested of here, in this? We have a personal favorite of mine, the oh, Mantis. Oh damn! Mantises have a bro, fairly nah. The Mantis is like one of the best bugs, bro. I seen that on Baki. Straightforward playstyle consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has damn, one of the highest crazy. base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. And a 1v1 Mantis its wins most of the time? and slow ground movement speed makes it can chasing fly? Prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed they easily make up for with strike speed. The Mantis' strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't oh, immobilize damn. the target, and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis's large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. So definitely a powerful predator, Yo, that hornet got with him! No! Tough. Next in A tier, we have the Flies. This does get a bit confusing due to the amount of other builds that use the word fly in their name. But this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. I'm not trying to true see flies this, only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off, but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for halteers a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair. And Yo, that's frog down predator bad. fly variants, such as the robber fly, to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight, 
and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head on, but are unable mm. to effectively counterattack during flight. Mm. Mm. However, mm. most flies are either scavengers Flamingo. or parasites, using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed to weave past the defenses hey, and yo. avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely Flamingos short lifespan, ugly. there's no denying that I they make the most out. of the time they do have. Ass, while hey. They do have an extremely short. Yo! I've never seen a flamingo in real life before. I'm not going to lie. This is my first time really looking at one. I just want to... Lifespan. There's no denying that they make the most of... What, what, do you, what, do you, what color do you think flamingo's blood is? You know what? Never mind, bro. Don't even... While they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. Dragonflies are like Dragonfly that? Dragonfly is similar to the crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. It's already such an efficient build that across several balance patches and game expansions, the Dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary, as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs They're harmless to us, though. So oh, yeah, I know. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't take out a couple of them motherfuckers in my lifetime. I will not hold you. Given it such a competitive edge. Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuver. Is there a human version of this video? You have any build in the game, and the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most insects, dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that direction, meaning they can strafe mid-flight and even fly backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, oh, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper yeah, payoff bro, for their on. incredible oh. agility, me, me, dragonflies me, me, have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head, granting them full 360-degree vision. This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows <laughs> them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. Damn, that frog's Unlike sick. <laughs> <any other builds. laughs> to see attacks coming long before nah. they're actually at risk of getting hit. Unlike many of the other builds on this list, <laughs> which either have a powerful larval form but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable early game, the Dragonfly is a high-tier predator in both forms. Oh, no. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, Dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to one-shot similarly sized fish and amphibian players. Now, while it was tempting to put Dragonflies in S-tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. Damn. They're easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, dragonflies like, cannot bro, walk, just like their that? energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. Not that devastating of a weakness, but it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. First in S tier we have the beetle. The beetle is the epitome of the insect build, a bunch of extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, yet somehow actually end up synergizing unbelievably well. They can flop, bro. Beetles are the premier tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage something that even many this reptiles like and that? amphibians can't get away with. Damn. Now, typically when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several other metrics. The most obvious of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to bulldoze opponents with their forward-facing weaponry is hard to overstate, but in my opinion, their real damage Some potential comes from beetles which possess the Yo. ability to blast their attackers with a toxic Yo. or acidic chemical burst. But that's not where the craziness stops, because although you'd probably expect a high-power tank to be a slow, lumbering build, 
beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. Yo, And if what? that weren't enough, despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, packing a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to move objects Yo. far from above their weight class, the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and Yo, for reaching valuable points Yo, he was just rolling a coconut. In That's short, so crazy. Have essentially every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful. And so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. They're so versatile and for adaptable. For real? Damn, I guess they really run in the server. That a beetle player can find a niche it in essentially any server. Oh, it wasn't a coconut? They truly are the ultimate insect Damn. and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities is, ultimately the beetle is still lacking the most powerful insect ability of them all eusociality. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Bro, stop, now, technically, bro. termites are a variant of the cockroach build, but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is the longest lived insect in the game, with a lifespan near that of a human or elephant. What? And it spends these many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to construct some of the most well-fortified bases what? in the game, giving even beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run for their money. Not only do they build incredible bases, but termites... Yo, nah, that's cr... Could you imagine if they were our size? literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge I'll army them command the vast up. territories. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, dealing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their base from an onslaught of invaders. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. Not usually an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation which covers the weak points of individual members. So certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial insect faction. Ants, Hymenoptera is a group of insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well-rounded having decent armor all over, and tend to have both the forward same thing? and rear-facing weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasp's signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. Eusocial Hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. Yo, they that's an ant structure? Attacks containing thousands of combatants. Yo, they can crack capture his prisoners, neck? cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Yo. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural Yo. projects in their own territory. So, while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants, termites and ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. In fact, the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony, but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy 
and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. That's crazy. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN, the sponsor of today's- Yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was a good, that was a good little, 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 little sponsor input, little transition, seamless. I ain't gonna cap, that's tough. Bro, I did not know that much about insects until today. Wow. Um. Okay. Cool. It was a good video. Let me know if you guys want more tier zoo videos on the channel, bro. That's tough.